Hello, families. Thank you so much for scanning that QR code and coming on and taking the time to listen to a virtual lesson um, with this fabulous book, Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. My name is Robin Murray, and I am with the Northern Nevada Literacy Council, and I am the Family Reading Program Coordinator, which sounds very fancy, but really it's my job to um, provide these lessons and get books to families and promote literacy and learning at home. The first thing that we're going to do is read Not Norman, a goldfish story together. And I'm going to pretend that I'm reading to a child. And I'm gonna stop at certain points, maybe ask questions and really highlight things that I see in the illustrations um, or in the text that are going to be important for how Norman is communicating with his new owner. So I hope that you can follow along with me in your book. So like I said, I'm gonna go through this book like I would be going through a book with a child. And I'm gonna be stopping and asking questions, pointing out certain things and really highlighting how Norman and his new owner are starting to understand each other and communicate. So this is the front of the book. We have some things on the front of the book. We have the title or the name of the book. That's up here, not Norman, a goldfish story. The author or the person who writes the words is Kelly Bennett, illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. Illustrated means that they are the ones that drew the pictures. Kelly Bennett, and Noah Z. Jones worked together to make this amazing book. Let's open up and see what we have. Oh, we have the title again, Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. Oh, it looks like it's almost a present. Oh, I love this page. This page has so many little fishies on there. Let's count and see how many fishes, fish you see, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I counted 10 fish. Do you have 10 fish in your book? Okay, let's see what's next. This is our title page. The title page gives us important information about the book. This side tells us when it was written, who, who printed the book, things that we probably don't really need to know right now. But this is our title page. It has a lot of information that we've already learned. Our title again, and the author, and the illustrator. Let's start reading our story. When I got Norman, I didn't want to keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet, not Norman. Right away, I can tell by the owner's face, he doesn't look very happy. I wanted a pet who could run and catch or one who could climb trees and chase strings. A soft, furry pet to sleep on my bed at night, not Norman. All Norman does is swim around and around and around and around and around and around and around. This might be a really good place to pause and talk about what kind of pet would you want and why? Do you want a pet who can climb trees or run and catch or sleep in your bed? And maybe if you already have a pet at home, what do you like doing with your pet? This is it, Norman, I decided. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move, not even a fin twitches. How can I trade him like this? No one will want a sorry looking fish in a gunky bowl. So on this page, I can tell, you see this green stuff? 
it does look gunky or dirty. And he doesn't look very happy. When I drop Norman into his nice, clean bowl, he starts dipping and flipping, flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy, I have to laugh. I think Norman is showing his new owner how happy he is. He's jumping and flipping. Don't think that just because I made, you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you, I tell him. Tomorrow, you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles. Blah, 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 blah. The next day, I take Norman to school with me. If I talk him up real good during show and tell, maybe someone will want him. On the way there, we see my friend Austin. Austin has a real cool dog and seven puppies. Want to swap one of your pups for Norman? I ask. Who's Norman? Asks Austin. My goldfish, I say. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> By the time I rescue Norman, half his water is gone. Now, this page has a lot of dogs. Let's see if Austin has one big dog and seven puppies, how many dogs does he have all together? Let's count. I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna point to each one so I don't miss any. One, two, there's a tail, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven puppies plus one big dog equals eight dogs all together. Let's see what happens to Norman. I'm worried about him with all of his water gone. I'm sorry. I tell Norman when we get to school, I'm really sorry. He just stares at me all googly eyed. Finally, it's my turn to show and tell. Just as I start to talk about gold, goldfish, Emily shouts, Jenny's gone. Who let my snake loose? So this looks picture looks like it's before she shouts. It looks like this is Emily and her snake Jenny is missing. Norman is up on the front. He's about and his owner is about to tell everybody how cool Norman is. Let's see what happens to the class once they know a snake is loose. Ready? <gasps> it looks crazy. Even the teacher is running around and screaming. He does not look happy. It doesn't look like anybody is listening to him. Does anyone hear the story of how I got Norman? Does anyone even ask to hold his bull? No, they're all jumping and screaming and chasing the snake. Not Norman, he's looking right at me. Thanks for listening, I tell him. Now this page I feel is really important to see that they're starting to understand each other. I know that when I'm talking or communicating with somebody, I like to show that I'm listening. And this is how I show that I'm listening. I think about it as my whole body. I have a calm body. My eyes are watching the person. My ears are listening. And I try to keep my voice quiet so I can hear and I don't interrupt. Right here, you can tell. His eyes are watching, his little fish body is calm, and it looks like he's really listening to Norman, or Norman is really listening to his owner. That afternoon, we go to my music lesson. As soon as it's, as soon as it's over, I'm taking Norman back to the pet store. I take out my tuba and begin to play. 
I glance over at Norman. He's swaying back and forth. Blog, 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 blog. He mouths. Look, Norman's singing, I say. Pay your attention, snaps Maestro, and try to play the proper notes. So now even Norman is listening to his owner play the tuba. He's swaying and trying to play along with him. It looks like they're really starting to communicate and understand each other. Maestro makes me stay for extra practice. By the time my lesson is over, it's too late to go to the pet store. Don't think that just because you like my music, I'm going to keep you, I tell Norman. He glugs. That night, I'm sound asleep. Screech, scratch. What's that noise? Scratch, screech. Yikes, there's something at my window. And out of the corner of my eye, I spot Norman. He isn't scared. He isn't swimming around in circles either. He glugs and gives me a little wave. I'm not alone. Together, Norman and I slid open the curtains. It was just a broken tree branch. Thanks for watching out for me, Norman. I think this is a, a very important page. Norman was there for his owner in a time where his owner felt very scared. And Norman shows that he's there for him. His eyes are watching. He waves to show that he's listening and he's there for him. On Saturday, I take Norman to the pet store. Just like I said I would. I look at the cats and dogs and snakes and birds. And look at the hamsters and mice and lizards too. They all look like good pets, but they are not Norman. So even though he likes these other animals, I think he's really grown to love Norman. When I got Norman, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep him. But now, even if I could pick any pet in the whole world, I wouldn't trade him. Not Norman. That is the end of our story. So now this would be a good time to talk about why do you think he, he changed the owner changed his mind about Norman. In the beginning of the story, he was really not happy with Norman the goldfish. He wanted to treat him. But by the end, I think he learns a lot about Norman and he really isn't as boring as he thought he was. Norman really loves to listen and be a part of his new owner's life. So this might be a good opportunity to also talk about not making snap judgments about people or even fish or animals. Maybe you see something and you say, oh, I'm not going to like that. That's not for me. We won't get along. But maybe once you stop and get to know somebody or get to try something out, you might change your mind. Thank you so much, families, for going through that book with me. I hope that that um, reading it together gives you some ideas on how to read it with your child later, and I'm sure they'll want to read it again with you, and really pointing out those ways that the Norman the goldfish and his owner start to communicate and talk to each other. Now, don't forget that in your guide, there's also the tips to go throughout the book.
Um, I like to highlight little things that would be very helpful for when I'm talking or reading with a child. Then there's also different ways to promote communication at home. Some learning activities, learning strategies, and just things that you can incorporate in your everyday routine. Now, these are some really easy ways to um, talk and incorporate with your child at home. What I'm going to focus on next is the book activities that I provided in your grab and go bag. There are two really fun activities. One is um, finger puppets and a song that you guys can do and sing along together. And then the other one is making your very own fish tank. So I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I provided. Um, what... So the first activity we are going to talk about is the five little fish song and finger puppets. This page is just the song. There's nothing to cut. You can keep this as a reference. Now, I know it looks like a lot of words, but really it is just repeating itself and starting at five and going down to one. I'll go over the words and how to do the actual song with your finger puppets after we cut out and get our materials ready. What we need for the five little fish is crayons or something else to color with, glue, and scissors. Hopefully you already have these things at home. And if not, the dollar store is a great place to find materials. The next thing that we're going to do is get out the next sheet for your finger puppets. There is two sides. This set is for one person. This set is for someone to share with. So the first thing I would do is to color inside the rectangles. There are five baby fish and one mommy fish. I decided to color my fish all different colors. You can color however you would like to. I also colored in the rest of my rectangle. You don't have to if you don't want to, but then the next step after you finish coloring however you would like, you are going to take your scissors and cut out the rectangle. This part, your child is going to need some help. But if you're starting to teach your child how to use scissors, there's a little song that I use. So scissors, I put my fingers on bottom and my thumb on top. So I kind of turn it into a little chant and I pretend like this is an alligator. Fingers on bottom and thumb on top. Open up its mouth and go chomp, chomp, chomp. I always say my other hand that is holding the paper is my helping hand. My helping hand is the one that's going to turn my paper and hold it still so my, my scissors can go in a straight line. So watch, I'm gonna chomp, chomp, chomp. Usually what I tell kiddos is to do a big haircut all the way around the outside. And then you can cut out the little parts afterwards. Oh, turning my paper, not my, my hand. Okay, so now I have what I need. And then I can go through and cut out each little rectangle. I'm just gonna do one on the top to start. Fingers on bottom and thumb on top. Okay. Now what you're gonna do with each rectangle is you're going to make a little loop and put some glue on the back. So I have my glue. And I would loop it around, hold it tight. And this is a good opportunity to count with your child. We're going to hold it and count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Done. Now I have made them, so you would probably want to let them dry before you start to play with them. So now that I have all my fish cut out and ready to go, I am going to put all the baby fish on one hand and mommy fish on the other hand. So I'm gonna start my song with two little fish and my mommy fish, just to make it a little faster. 
And two little fish, one out one day, over the waves and far away. Mommy fish said, glub, 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 glub. And one little fishy came back. So one fish disappeared. I had two fish. One fish swam away, and now I only have one fish. One little fish went out one day over the waves and far away. Mommy fish said, glub, 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 but none of the fishies came back. So now this is the end of the song. Sad mommy fish went out one day over the ways and far away. Sad mommy fish said, glub, 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 glub. And all two fishies came back. Mwah! So I started with two fish. So you can see a shortened version, but you can start with five fish and go five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then all five fishies come back. It really is how long your child will want to participate and how long, you, how much you have time for. This is a great activity. Finger plays are especially good for fine motor skills, singing. It's also a great way to incorporate some math in your learning, starting at five and counting backwards, which is not an easy skill. So the next activity is to make and create your own fish tank. And maybe you can have a fish like Norman. So these are the materials that we are going to need. Most of these materials you're gonna find in your grab and go bag. The plate with the hole in the bottom, the popsicle stick, and the fishy. What you need from home, again, are scissors, crayons, and glue. The first thing that you're going to do is color your plate. Now, when I color my plate, I'm going to make sure that this part is on the bottom because we are going to put our goldfish in from the bottom and let him swim around. So I'm gonna show you one that I already decorated. I used my crayons and it doesn't matter if you have crayons, colored pencils, anything that you want. But this is how I decorated my tank. I have some pebbles, I have some seaweed, some bubbles, and you also have some foam stickers, which I forgot. And you can add some fun things into your fish tank. Okay, so now my fish tank is done. I know you are going to need a lot of time, so you can either keep going, pause, whatever you need to do, but remember to make sure that what, however you decorate it, your hole is on the bottom. So I'm gonna put that to the side. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is color your fish and cut him out or her. So I decided to color my fish first. I made my fish very colorful and I cut my fish out already. If you would like, you can also color your stick. So this is my stick. I put bubbles on it. And what I would do is I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on my stick and then you're going to glue it on just like that. Now, when your glue is dry and you feel like your fishy won't fall off, let him dry for a while, you're going to put your fishy behind and have him go underneath inside the slit. So I named my fishy Bubbles. I put his name on the stick. And now watch, I can have my fish swim around in his fish tank. So this is great for fine motor skills. Coloring is a really good way to build those muscles and hands. Cutting another great way, stickers, and really just having a, an imagination and playing with your fish. I hope that you guys have fun making your fish and your child can share your fish with other members of the family. Have fun creating.